Good morning. Pastor Sean here. Today is Saturday, January 13th, and this is your morning prayer. So let us begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. All right, continuing in Acts today, we've got chapters 4 through 6. And we begin with Peter, uh, well, we kind of continue with Peter and John uh, dealing with uh, the council after they were boldly proclaiming Jesus. And uh, so the council um, is very upset by this. They're very annoyed <laughs> by what is uh, what they hear going on here. And uh, Peter and John refuse to back down. They 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 will not stop um, speaking of Jesus. And, and they say, you know, well, we, we can't. We, we can't not speak of, of what we've witnessed. And there is no other word or name by which we can be saved. So we're going to, we're going to talk about Jesus. Um, so the priests, uh, the, 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 the high priest, the chief priest, the, the council, all the, everybody who they're, they're going to be up against, um, you know, they, they acknowledge it was, was, was fun is that they acknowledge freely that, um, that yes, these two men did an amazing thing by healing this man. They did an, an incredible sign, and they can't they can't deny it. They they flat out say we can't deny what they've done, um, but they don't want this word to continue to go out. They they don't want this news to spread. Um, they don't want people hearing about this Jesus who um, apparently still you know has 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 risen from the dead and is still uh, still here. You know, through through the working now of the apostles and the Holy Spirit, so um, they want to kind of just nip this whole Christian church thing uh, in the bud before it really gets off off the ground. So they charge them not to speak of Jesus. They they say, oh well, you know, they um, uh, I think they 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 abuse them a little bit, <laughs> and then they uh, charge them to to say nothing, to stop talking about Jesus. So uh, Paul and I'm sorry, Paul, Peter and John go back to the disciples to tell them everything that the council said. And uh, they all join together and, and lifted their voices to God. Um, and they essentially lift up a prayer that says, OK, well, give us the, the courage, the boldness to keep on talking. Um, don't you know, don't let us stop. And um, you know, what what a what a fantastic, bold prayer that is. And especially when you consider you know, look at what, what has happened from, you know, before the crucifixion where, you know, Peter, you know, oh, sure, he's he's all talk. But when it comes to time to, uh, you know, to stand strong, he, he melts away. He denies Christ. Um, when when Jesus dies and, and, and they all go into hiding, then when, when, when he rises from the dead and he appears to them uh, a week later, where are they? They're still in hiding. Uh, they're still behind locked doors. When when Jesus appears to them at um yeah you know, as they're going fishing, you know they're they're just kind of going back into old patterns, old old ways of living. So you know before uh before Pentecost, you know we, the picture we get is you know certainly believers, people who who have witnessed the resurrection and they know who Jesus is and that he he rose from the dead. However, the Holy Spirit has not you know been been fully you know given to them so so they that that boldness that that um that transform life is is not you know we don't see that yet but then once pentecost hits bam um they are out there and they they will not back down they will let nothing stop them from pro proclaiming christ um and it's just such a a radical shift um and this is truly a a perfect example of of the new life in christ that you know, it does change that, that it, 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 it has this effect and, and, it, and it should, you know, um, I think we talked a little bit about it in, in Sunday school last week that, you know, Lutherans sometimes, um, you know, get this knock where, you know, we, we don't focus, you know, we, we focus so much on doctrine. We want to make sure we get our doctrine right. Um, and we don't really like talking about feelings or changed life or anything because God forbid, um, that, 
is viewed as something, some sort of works righteousness thing that, that maybe we're, we're looking to, we're looking for a changed life as evidence of our faith. And we say, oh, well, we, of course, our baptism is, 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 is where we go for the assurance of our faith. And we, we, we kind of get little, we get some lines crossed there with like, well, of course, baptism is an assurance of faith, but evidence of faith is, is, should be a changed life, should be that we're doing good works. Um, you know, scripture talks about this. Um, you know, James will, will say, you know, uh, faith without works is dead. Uh, so, you know, we, we should we should see this kind of activity in our lives. And, and maybe not completely like, bam, from zero to 100 right away, but, you know, at least some, some movement towards that, that we see more and more as, as, as we devote ourselves to, to prayer and to, to scripture and to hear and receiving the word of God, receiving the sacraments, that, you know, we're, we're getting bolder. We get, we're getting more um, uh, encouraged to, to share that word and to bring it and to not back down. So off my soapbox there. Um, so we, we get a little bit about how the, the, the life of the early church was and that they had everything in common. So there was this kind of very um, communal kind of living where they, they all shared everything they had. They kind of pooled their money, whatever anybody had need, they provided for it. Um, so it was very much a, um, a, a, a very, I don't know what, what I mean, it's not communism. <laughs> I mean, that'll freak people out if I say that. Um, but I mean, it was a very communal, um, say I think like a hippie kind of commune sort of thing where, where yeah, we don't have property, man. It's just everybody, we, we provide for everyone. Um, that's the way it was in, in the early church. Now, to go back to that whole descriptive versus prescriptive, that this is a description of how it worked at the very beginning of the church, not a prescription for how it should be now. OK, so this is not, this is not saying we when we read this, we say, oh, this is how it should work in our churches in our, um, you know, faith communities, whatever. It's just that that's not the way it is. Um, and it's not I mean, that's not to say that it's bad or that it couldn't be that way. It's just it's it's not a it's not a prescription. It's not like God said, this is the way it must be. Um, this is just the way it was. Um, and we see that it didn't last very long. Um you know, it, it didn't continue on throughout the history of the church. So anyway, um, we get this example of Barnabas who sold a field and gave all the money to the apostles. So he, you know, very generous gift. And what we see here is that it kind of, um, it, it seems to be that Barnabas sort of spurred this, this kind of this movement to like, you know what, we're, we are going to just get, uh, sell all of, all of our property and, and give it to the church. And we're all going to be taking care of one another, which brings us to Ananias and Sapphira which, um, you know, is, is a, <laughs> I would imagine it probably gets abused, uh, the, the account of Ananias and Sapphira to be like, uh, to hammer, to hammer over, hammer people over the head to be like, you know, give more or, you know, don't hold anything back, give more to Jesus or give more to God, give more to the church. Um, and just a lot of bad stewardship messages are probably coming out of that. But really the, the, the problem here, what, what the issue is and why they drop dead, um, you know, it, it is a judgment on them, is because they lied to the Holy Spirit, okay? It's not a good thing. Um, and the, the implication here is that uh, that everyone was like, okay, everyone was doing this, and this was kind of the, the, the practice of that, that community. And so, okay, great. Well, they sold a property that was theirs, and they held back some of it, okay? And so the... the um, the, the idea here is that they 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 presented the partial amount but gave the impression that this was the full amount so that was the deception there um and so you know the, the, yeah the real issue there wasn't that um, wasn't the issue of them you know hey give more and so you better give more but just that they weren't they, they were lying <laughs> um you know if if they would have said like hey, you know, here we, we sold the property and we're donating this much. It's like, okay, fantastic, great. But if they're going to say, well, we sold the property, so here's all the proceeds, but then they held some back, well, now, now they're lying. <laughs> that's, a, that's a bad thing. Um, and, you know, so it's not really a, a, I don't see this as a great stewardship kind of message just because, um, you know, I, I prefer to go with, you know, God loves a cheerful giver. You know, it, it is not put upon you to like give, a certain percentage 
You know, if you want to give 10%, great. If you want to give 2%, okay. Uh, if you want to give 100%, knock yourself out. I, you know, it might not be the, the, the wisest thing financially for you, but if that's what you, if that is what you desire to do, then, and that, that is what you dedicate to God, then okay, go for it. Um, but you know, God doesn't look at you at the receipts and he's not, you know, like, Oh, well you need to, oh, you're only giving that much. Like, no, he's, if you are cheerfully giving what you have decided to give to God. Awesome. Great. Um, but the the whole thing is like don't lie to the guy, <laughs> um, you know we 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 lie to the God we, we lie to the God we lie to God with um you know when when we do stuff like that we lie to God when um when, when we like oh you know I'm 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 going to um you know, with with our sin and um you know uh, I'm trying to the thought just left sorry. <laughs> It must be all the snow. Um, I know it's cold outside and I'm, I'm, I'm not excited about going upstairs and, and, and seeing how much snow is on the driveway right now. But um, anyway, the, the moral of the story is you don't lie to God. Um, and then we get, uh, we move on from there to the, the apostles being arrested. Uh, then an angel sets them free. And, and again, they, they are charged not to speak of Jesus, but they just go on doing it. Um, unfortunately, the way the readings are broken up, we, we get the introduction to Stephen, um, one of the, uh, the extra guys who are, who are brought in to help wait tables to free up the apostles to do ministry stuff. So we get introduced to Stephen, uh, and, and real briefly, he is, he is brought to the council because there's some charges brought up against him because he was full of the Holy Spirit. Um, and we'll get more into that, um, not tomorrow, uh, Monday. So hold on to that. But, um, but yeah, that should give you a good, uh, good overview going into today's readings. And, uh, there you go. Acts four through six. Let us pray. I thank you, my heavenly father, through Jesus Christ, your dear son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands, I commend myself, my body and soul and all things, let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Blessings to you on this Saturday. Hope you have a great day. Hope your weekend goes well. Um, if you're out there shoveling snow like I'm going to be shortly, take it easy. Don't, uh, don't overdo it. Um, and uh, we'll see you back on Monday morning. So until then, peace be with you.